I am going to solve this problem. Before solving the problem, let me read this problem carefully. For the configuration shown in figure, the breaker connecting a large system to bus 2 is initially open. The system 3 phase fault level at bus number 3 under this condition is not known. After closing the system breaker, 3 phase fault level at bus number 1 was found to be 5 per unit. What will be the new 3 phase fault level at system bus 3 after the interconnection? All per unit values are on common base, pre-fault load currents are neglected and pre-fault voltages are assumed to be 1 per unit at all buses. After reading this problem, you will understand that there are two important statements. The first statement is, after closing the system breaker, the three phase fault level at bus bar number 1 was found to be 5 per unit. With the help of this statement, we can find out the reactance of the system. This system is basically a generator and with the help of first statement, we will find out the reactance of the system. The second statement of this problem is what will be the new three phase fault level at system bus 3 after the interconnection means the circuit breaker is closed and we have to calculate the three phase fault level at bus number 3 this is the whole question there are two statements with the help of first statement we will find out the reactance of this system and in the second statement uh, the examiner is asking you asking to find out the three phase fault level at bus number 3 now i am going to find out the reactance of the system with the help of the information given in statement number 1 to find out the reactance of the system which is basically a generator first we will draw the per unit reactance diagram of the given figure the per unit reactance diagram can be drawn easily you can see here a generator is connected to bus bar number 4. The generator will be shown like a constant voltage source behind the reactance. The reactance of the generator is 0.2 per unit. You can see here a transformer is connected between bus bar number 4 and 1 having reactance 0.2 per unit. A transmission line is connected between bus bar number 1 and 2 having reactance 0.3 per unit. A circuit breaker is connected between bus bar number 2 and 3. You can see here. This circuit breaker is closed according to statement number 1. Therefore, we will draw a line connecting bus bar number 2 and 3. This system is basically a generator. Therefore, we will show this generator like a constant voltage source behind the reactance. We have to calculate uh, the value of reactance x. In the, in the question, it is written that pre-fault load currents are neglected. Therefore, the internal voltage of the machines will be 1 per unit. The fault level at bus bar number 1 is 5 per unit. You can say that the fault appears that at bus bar number 1. Therefore, we will draw the Thamnes equivalent between bus bar number 1 and neutral bus. The Thamnes equivalent of the given network can be drawn in this way. You can see here that I have written Thamnes equivalent voltage equals to 1 per unit. Thamnes equivalent voltage is the voltage drop or you can say potential difference between bus bar number 1 and neutral bus. Because the internal voltage of the machines are 1 per unit, therefore the voltage drop or potential difference between bus bar number 1 and neutral bus will be 1 per unit. You can calculate it but there is no need to waste your time so if the remember this point if the internal voltage of the machines are 1 per unit the potential drop between any bus and neutral bus will always be 1 per unit and easily you can write the value of Thamnes equivalent voltage equals to 1 per unit you can calculate the Thamnes equivalent reactance between bus bar number 1 and neutral bus. The Thamnes equivalent reactance between bus bar number 1 and neutral bus will be 0.4 into 0.3 plus x divided by 0.7 plus x. The fault appears at bus bar number 1. 
you can calculate the value of fault current. The fault current will be ETH upon XTH. The value of the Thevenin's equivalent voltage is 1 and the value of the Thevenin's equivalent reactance is this and the fault current value will be 0.7 plus x divided by 0.4 into 0.3 plus x. According to statement number 1, the fault level at bus bar number 1 is 5 per unit and The fault level at bus bar number 1 is 5 per unit and the fault level at bus bar number 1 can be written as pre-fault voltage level at bus bar number 1 into fault current. In the question it is written that all the pre-fault voltages, uh, pre voltages are assumed to be 1 per unit at all the buses. Therefore, you can say that uh, the pre-fault voltage at bus bar number 1 is 1 per unit the fault level is 5 per unit you can say that the fault current is 5 per unit this fault current and the fault current which we have calculated here are same we can equate these two values and the value of the reactance of the system will be 0.1 per unit so in this way with the help of the statement number 1 we have calculated the value of the reactance of the system of this system which is basically a generator now the examiner uh, is asking what will be the new three phase fault level at system bus 3 after the interconnection it means that this, is, this circuit breaker is closed and we have to find out the three phase fault level at bus bar number 3. So again we can make the per unit reactance diagram of the given figure. Per unit reactance diagram can be easily drawn and we know the system reactance that is 0.1 per unit. We have to calculate the fault level at bus bar number 3 and you can see here that the circuit breaker is closed. So because the circuit breaker is closed, we have to draw a line connecting bus bar number 2 and 3 here. The fault appears at, we have to calculate the fault level at uh, bus bar number 3. Therefore, we will draw Thevenin's equivalent between bus bar number 3 and neutral bus. Thevenin's equivalent can be drawn in this way. The internal voltage of the machines are 1 per unit. Therefore, the Thevenin's equivalent voltage uh, between uh, bus bar number 3 and neutral bus will be 1 per unit. I have already told you that uh, if the internal voltage of the machines are 1 per unit then the potential drop between any of the bus and neutral bus will be 1 per unit. Therefore don't worry about it. The Thevenin's equivalent voltage will be 1 per unit if the internal voltage of the machines are 1 per unit. Now you need to calculate the value of the Thevenin's Thevenin's equivalent reactance between bus bar number 3 and neutral bus. You can see here these three reactances are in series and the series combination of these reactances will be in parallel with 0.1. So easily you can calculate the value of the Thevenin's equivalent reactance which will be 0 0.07 upon 0 0.8. When the fault appears at bus bar number 3 you can find out the value of fault current. The fault current will be ETH upon XTH. The value of ETH equals to 1 per unit and the value of XTH is 0 0.07 upon 0 0.8 and the fault current will be 0 0.8 upon 0 0.07. Now we have to calculate the fault level at bus bar number 3. Fault level at bus bar number 3 is equal to pre-fault voltage at bus bar number 3 into 3 phase fault current at bus bar number 3. It is given in the question that pre-fault voltages at all the buses are 1 per unit. We have calculated the value of 3 phase fault current. We can put this value here. We can put this value here. And you can calculate the value of fault level at bus number 3. That is equal to 11.4285 per unit. So in this way, the answer of this question is 11.4285 per unit. Or you can say, uh, the three phase fault level at system bus 3 is 11.4285 per unit.
So in this way we have uh, solved this problem. I am going to solve the next problem. A three phase alternator generating unbalanced voltages is connected to an unbalanced load through a three phase transmission line as shown in figure. The neutral of the alternator and the star point of the load are solidly grounded. The three phase voltages of the alternator are EA equals to 10 angle 0 degrees in volt, EB equals to 10 angle minus 90 degrees in volt and EC equals to 10 angle 120 degrees in volt. We have to calculate the positive sequence component of the load current. To solve this problem first we will find out the phase currents of the load and then we will transform the phase currents of the load into the sequence components of the current. So let us first find out the phase currents of the load. The phase currents of the load are IA, IB and IC. This point is grounded therefore the potential of this point will be 0 volt. If this point is at 0 volt potential can you tell me the potential of this point? The potential of this point will be EA, the potential of this point will be EB, the potential of this point will be EC. This point is grounded therefore the potential of this point will be 0 volt. The potential of this point will be 0 volt, the potential of this point will be 0 volt and the potential of this point will be 0 volt. We can easily find out the current in phase A of the load IA. IA can be written as EA minus 0 upon J2 and the value of phase current IA will be 5 angle minus 90 degrees in ampere. Easily we can find out the phase current IB. IB can be written IB can be calculated as EB minus 0 upon J3 and easily we can calculate the phase current IB as 3.33 angle minus 180 degrees ampere. The phase current IC can be calculated in this way IC equals to EC minus 0 upon J4 and after calculation you will get the phase current IC as 2.5 angle 30 degrees ampere. Now we will use this formula to transform the phase currents into the sequence currents. IA0 is the zero sequence component, IA1 is the positive sequence component and IA2 is the negative sequence component of the, of the current of phase A. A is a operator and the value of A is equal to 1 angle 120 degrees. A square, the value of A square is equal to 1 angle 240 degrees. We have to, according to the question, we have to calculate the positive sequence component of the load current IA1 and therefore it can be written as 1 upon 3 1 into IA plus A into IB plus A square into IC. So we will get this equation. We can put the value of IA, IB, IC, A and A square and we can easily find the value of IA1. The positive sequence component of the load current will be 3.51 angle minus 80.9 degrees in ampere. In this way we have solved this problem. The positive sequence component of the load current will be 3.51 angle minus 80.9 degrees in ampere. In this way we have completed this question. I am going to solve the next problem. The sequence components of the fault current are as follows. The positive sequence current equals to J 1.5 per unit. Negative sequence current equals to minus J 0 0.5 per unit. Zero sequence current equals to minus J 1 per unit. We have to find out the type of fault in the system. The options are given to us. Let us recall 
the interconnection of the sequence networks in the case of line to ground fault. You can see here this is this diagram represents the interconnection of the sequence networks in the case of line to ground fault. By this diagram you can say that all the sequence currents in the case of line to ground fault are same. You can see here in the problem the sequence currents are not same therefore option A is incorrect. Now let us consider option B that is double line fault. Let us recall the interconnection of the sequence networks in the case of double line fault. The interconnection of the sequence networks in double line fault is given here. You can say that the positive sequence current equals to minus negative sequence current and the zero sequence current in the case of double line fault is zero. You can see the problem. The zero sequence current is not zero therefore option B is incorrect. Now let us take the option D that is triple line to ground fault. In the case of triple line to ground fault only the positive sequence current is present. The negative sequence current and the zero sequence current will be zero. If you see the question, the negative sequence current and the zero sequence currents are not zero therefore option D is incorrect. So we are left with option C. Let us take the option C that is double line to ground fault. Let us recall the interconnection of the sequence networks in the case of double line to ground fault. This diagram represents the interconnection of the sequence networks in double line to ground fault. If you apply KCL at this point, you can say that sum of the sequence currents in double line to ground fault is always zero. If you add all the sequence currents, you will get zero value. Therefore, option C is correct. The type of fault in the system is double line to ground fault because the sum of all the sequence currents is zero. So we have completed this question. I am going to solve the next problem. A three phase transmission line supplies a delta connected load. The conductor C of the line develops an open circuit fault as shown in the figure. The currents in the lines are as shown on the diagram. We have to calculate the positive sequence current component in line A. To solve this problem, we will use this equation. By using this equation, we can transform the line currents into the sequence currents. IA0 is the zero sequence current component of line A. IA1 is the positive sequence current component of line A and IA2 is the negative sequence current component of line A. Here we have to calculate the value of IA1 and IA1 can be written as 1 upon 3 into 1 into IA plus A into IB plus A square into IC. Here A is a operator and the value of A equals to 1 angle 120 degrees and the value of A square equals to 1 angle 240 degrees. We can write the equation of the positive sequence current component of line A in this way. I have already told you and we can put the value of IA, IB and IC in this equation and easily we can calculate the positive sequence current component of line A as 5.77 angle minus 30 degrees in ampere. So in this way we have completed this problem. Let us try to understand this problem. In this problem a 50 Hz alternator is rated as 500 ampere 20 kV with the direct axis synchronous reactance equals to 1 per unit and the direct axis subtransient reactance equals to 0.2 per unit. 
This alternator supplies a purely resistive load of 400 megawatt at a terminal voltage of 20 kV. This load is directly connected across the generator terminals when a symmetrical fault occurs at load terminals. We have to calculate the initial symmetrical RMS current in the generator in per unit. The other name of initial symmetrical RMS current is subtransient current. So to find the subtransient current we will use the direct axis subtransient reactance. So let us solve this problem. In this problem alternator is working on loaded condition. Therefore we need to calculate the internal voltage of the alternator. I am going to take the rating of the alternator as base values. The base voltage equals to 20 kV and the base power equals to 500 MPa. The resistive load of 400 megawatt is being supplied at a terminal voltage of 20 kV. Can you tell me the per unit value of the terminal voltage? The per unit value of the terminal voltage will be equal to actual value of the terminal voltage divided by the base value and it will be 1 per unit. I am going to take the terminal voltage as a reference voltage. Therefore in phasor form the terminal voltage can be written as 1 angle 0 per unit. From the given specification of the load, we can calculate the current drawn by the load. It is given in the problem that there is a resistive load of 400 megawatt. So can you tell me the power drawn by the load in per unit? the actual value of the power drawn divided by the base value of the power that is 500 MVA. The terminal voltage in per unit equals to 1 per unit. Because the load is resistive in nature you can write the power factor equals to 1. You can calculate the value of the current drawn by the resistive load that will be 0.8 per unit. Because the load is resistive in nature you can write the current in phasor form as 0.8 angle 0 degrees in per unit. The, ph the phase difference between the terminal voltage and the current drawn by the load will be 0. That's why I have written angle 0 here. So we know the current drawn by the load that is equal to 0.8 angle 0. You can apply KVL and easily you can find out the internal voltage of the generator that will be equal to 1.0127 angle 9.09 .09 degrees in per unit. Now let us find out the subtransient current in the generator. When the fault appears at the terminals of the generator, no current will be supplied by the load because the load is passive in nature. The complete fault current will be supplied by the generator. So you can find out the fault current, the uh, subtransient current or fault current or initial symmetrical RMS current in this way E upon J X D double dash. You know the value of the internal voltage of the generator and you know the value of direct axis subtransient reactance. You can put these values and easily you can find out the initial symmetrical RMS current in the generator and the answer will be 5.063 angle minus 80.9 degrees in per unit. So in this way we have completed this problem. I am going to solve the next problem. 
In this problem, there is a 500 MVA turbo generator which produces power at 22 kV. This generator is connected in a star and neutral is solidly grounded. The positive sequence, negative sequence and the zero sequence reactances of the generator are given in per unit. The generator is operating at rated voltage and it is disconnected from the rest of the system and we have to calculate the magnitude of the subtransient line current for single line to ground fault at the terminal of the generator in per unit. If you read this statement carefully, the generator is operating at rated voltage and disconnected from the rest of the system, you can conclude two points. The first point is that the terminal voltage of the generator equals to rated voltage. It is written that the generator is operating at rated voltage. It means that the terminal voltage of the generator equals to rated voltage. And it is written that the generator is disconnected from the rest of the system means that the generator is operating at no load. We know that at no load, internal voltage of the machine or you can say internal voltage of the generator equals to the terminal voltage of the generator. With the help of first point you can say that this terminal voltage will be equal to rated voltage and we know that rated voltage in per unit will be 1 per unit. So we have got the value of the internal voltage of the generator. The internal voltage of the generator equals to 1 per unit. We have to calculate the magnitude of the fault current for single line to ground fault. Subtransient line current means fault current. So basically we have to calculate the fault current. We know the formula for finding the fault current in the case of single line to ground fault. 3 into internal voltage divided by positive sequence reactance plus negative sequence reactance plus zero sequence reactance. We know the value of internal voltage and positive, negative and zero sequence reactances of the generator. We will put all the values and we can easily calculate the value of fault current. The value of fault current will be 8.57 per unit and in this way we have completed this problem. I am going to solve the next problem. In this problem the severity of line to ground and three phase fault at the terminals of unloaded synchronous generator is to be same. If the terminal voltage is 1 per unit and the positive, negative and zero sequence reactances of the alternator are given as follows. Then we have to calculate the required inductive reactance for neutral grounding. So basically in this problem we have to calculate the value of xn so that the fault current in the case of line to ground fault should be equal to the fault current in the case of three phase fault at the terminals of unloaded synchronous generator. In this problem it is written that the synchronous generator is unloaded and the terminal voltage is 1 per unit Therefore, we can say that the internal voltage of the generator will be equal to 1 per unit. We know the formula for finding the fault current in the case of line to ground fault and the formula is 3 into E divided by x1 plus x2 plus x0 plus 3xn. We know the value of the internal voltage and we also know the value of the positive negative zero sequence reactances and the neutral reactance value. We can put all the values here and we can calculate the line to ground fault current. Now we know the formula for finding the fault current in the case of three phase fault that is equal to E upon x1. We can put the value of the internal voltage and the positive sequence reactance and easily we can calculate the three phase fault current. Now according to the problem these two fault currents are equal 
and we can equate these two fault currents and easily we can calculate the value of the neutral reactants required so that the fault current in the case of line to ground fault and three phase fault will be same so in this way we have solved the problem and the neutral reactants required for this uh, problem will be 0 0.0166 per unit and in this way we have completed this problem I am going to solve the next problem in this problem there is a three phase generator rated as 110 MVA 11 kV this generator is connected through a circuit breaker to a transformer the generator is having direct axis sub transient reactance equals to 19% transient reactance equals to 26% and synchronous reactance equals to 130% we can convert the percentage values into the per unit values the generator is operating at no load and rated voltage when a three phase short circuit fault occurs between the breaker and the transformer we have to calculate the magnitude of initial symmetrical RMS current or you can say we have to calculate the sub transient current in the breaker in the breaker so to solve this problem let me first draw the per unit reactance diagram of the given system easily we can draw the per unit reactance diagram in this problem it is given that the generator is operating at no load and the, and the terminal voltage of the generator is equal to rated voltage therefore we can conclude that the internal voltage of the generator will be equal to 1 per unit because we have to calculate the sub transient current or you can say initial symmetrical RMS current in the breaker therefore I have considered the sub transient reactance of the generator that is 0.19 per unit you can see here this is the circuit breaker so easily we can calculate the initial symmetrical RMS current that is IF and the value of this current will be equal to E upon XD double dash and after calculation you will get 5.2632 per unit this much current will pass through the circuit breaker we can convert the per unit value into the actual value by multiplying this per unit value with the base value you can see here in this system there is only one generator therefore the rating of the generator will be considered as the base values therefore the mm, base MVA will be 110 MVA and the base voltage will be 11 kV and from these base values we can calculate the base current the base current will be base power divided by root 3 into base voltage the base power is 110 MVA and the base voltage is 11 kV and after calculation you will get the base current as 5.774 kilo ampere I want to calculate the actual value of initial symmetrical RMS current passing through the circuit breaker therefore I will multiply the per unit value with the base value so the per unit value of the uh, initial symmetrical RMS current is 5.2632 into the base value of the current is 5.774 kilo ampere and after calculation you will get the actual value of initial symmetrical RMS current equals to 30.39 kilo ampere and in this way we have completed this problem I am going to solve the next problem in this problem there are two generators G1 and G2 connected by 15 kV line with a bus at midpoint as shown below the ratings and the positive sequence reactance of each generator is given to us the length of line number 1 and line number 2 is equal to 10 km and the positive sequence reactance of each line is 0.225 ohm per km the complete information provided by the examiner is written in the single line diagram you can see here the rating of the generator G1 
is 250 MVA 15 kV and the positive sequence reactance of generator G1 is 0.25 per unit. The rating of generator G2 is 100 MVA 15 kV and the positive sequence reactance of generator G2 is 0.1 per unit. The net reactance of line number 1 will be 0.225 into 10 and that will be 2.25 ohm and in the same way you can calculate the net reactance of line number 2 and that will be 0.225 into 10 equals to 2.25 ohm. So the complete information provided by the examiner is written in the single line diagram. In part 1 of the problem we have to draw the positive sequence network with the per unit values on 100 MVA common base. So I am going to solve part 1 of the problem. You can see here the examiner has provided you the new base MVA that is equal to 100 MVA but the examiner has not specified the new base voltage. Therefore I am going to consider the voltage rating of the generator as a new base voltage to draw the positive sequence reactance diagram. You can see here the new base voltage I have considered I have considered equals to the voltage rating of the generator that is 15 kV. So let us draw the positive sequence diagram or positive sequence reactance diagram. We can easily draw the positive sequence reactance diagram in this way. You can see here at bus bar number 1 there is a generator and the generator will be shown like a constant voltage source behind the reactance. Between bus bar number 1 and 3 there is a transmission line. Again there is a transmission line between bus bar number 3 and 2 and generator G2 is connected at bus bar number 2 and this generator will be shown like a constant voltage source behind the reactance and this line represents the reference bus. We have selected uh, the examiner has a specified new base MVA equals to 100 MVA and by default we have considered new base voltage equals to the voltage rating of the generator and which is equal to 15 kV. We have to calculate the new per unit reactance of generator G1 on new base values and I think you know the formula. The new per unit reactance of generator G1 equals to old per unit reactance into new base power divided by old base power into old base voltage divided by new base voltage square and after calculation you will get new per unit reactance of generator G1 equals to 0.1 per unit. Now I am going to find out the new per unit reactance of generator G2 and that will be equal to old per unit reactance into new base power divided by old base power into old base voltage divided by new base voltage square and after calculation you will get new per unit reactance of generator G2 equals to 0.1 per unit. Now I am going to calculate the new per unit reactance of line number 1 and line number 2. To find out the new per unit reactance of line number 1 and line number 2 we will use this formula. Actual value of the reactance divided by new base impedance and you know the new base impedance will be calculated from the new base values. New base impedance will be equal to new base voltage square divided by new base power and easily we can calculate the new per unit reactance of line number 1 and line number 2. You can see here new per unit reactance of line number 1 equals to actual value of reactance of line number 1 divided by new base impedance new base impedance will be equal to new base voltage square divided by new base power and after calculation the new per unit reactance of line number 1 will be equal to 1 per unit. In the same way we can calculate the new per unit reactance of line number 2. New per unit reactance of line number 2 will be equal to actual value of the reactance of line number 2 divided by new base impedance. New base impedance will be equal to new base voltage square divided by new base power and after calculation new per unit reactance of line number 2 will be equal to 1 per unit. <clears throat> In this way we have calculated 
new per unit reactance of all the equipments of the power system network that is generator number one generator number two line number one and line number two we can put the values of new per unit reactance in this positive sequence network you can see here I have written all the values of the new per unit reactance in this positive sequence network and in this way we have completed part one of the problem now I am going to solve part two of the problem in part two we have to calculate three phase fault MVA at bus bar number three so let us draw the Thevenin's equivalent between bus bar number 3 and the reference bus. So this is Thevenin's equivalent between bus bar number 3 and reference bus. E is the Thevenin's equivalent voltage. XTH is the Thevenin's equivalent reactance. If you read this problem, you can tell me that nothing is specified about the loading conditions of the generators. Therefore, I am assuming no load conditions of the machine. If the machines are operating on no load, we can assume the internal voltage of generator G1 and G2 equals to 1 per unit. That's why you can see here, I have considered, I have written here, the internal voltage of generator G1 equals to 1 per unit. And also I have written here, the internal voltage of generator G2 equals to 1 per unit. If the machines are operating on no load, you can assume that the pre-fault voltage at bus bar number 1, at bus bar number 2, at bus bar number 3 equals to 1 per unit. You can easily tell me the Thevenin's equivalent voltage between bus bar number 3 and reference bus that will be equal to 1 per unit. I have already told you that if the internal voltage of the machines are equal to 1 per unit, the potential difference between any bus and the reference bus will be equal to 1 per unit. Therefore, you can write Thevenin's equivalent voltage easily that, is, that will be equal to 1 per unit. You can calculate the Thevenin's equivalent reactance. You can see here these two reactances will be in series these two reactances will be in series and this combination will be in parallel with this combination so 1.1 will be in parallel with 1.1 you can see here so the Thevenin's equivalent reactance will be equal to 1.1 divided by 2 per unit when a three phase fault occurs at bus bar number 3 we can calculate the fault current. Fault current will be equal to E upon XTH. You know the value of E and XTH. And easily we can calculate the value of fault current. The fault current will be equal to 2 upon 1.1 per unit. Finally, we have to calculate the fault level at bus bar number 3. According to the definition of the fault level, the fault level is defined as uh, the pre-fault voltage level at that bus into the fault current. The pre-fault voltage level at bus bar number 3 is equal to 1 per unit. I have already told you that the machines are operating on no load and therefore the internal voltage of the machines and the pre-fault voltage at all the buses will be considered as 1 per unit. So, the pre-fault voltage level at bus bar number 3 equals to 1 per unit and the fault current already we have calculated. We can multiply these two values and the fault level at bus bar number 3 in per unit can be written in this way. 2 upon 1.1 per unit. You can see the question. We have to calculate the three for we have to calculate the three phase fault MVA at bus bar number 3. So, uh, to calculate the actual fault level, we will multiply the per unit value with the base value. So, uh, 
the new base MVA is given to you by the examiner that is 100 MVA so multiply this per unit value with the base value and we can easily find the fault level at bus bar number 3 and that will be equal to 181.82 MVA so in this way we have solved this problem completely I am going to solve this problem for the network shown in figure the zero sequence reactances in per unit are indicated we have to calculate the zero sequence driving point reactance of node number 3 to solve this problem we will draw the zero sequence network of the given system the zero sequence network can be drawn in this way you can see here there are three buses in this system bus number 1 bus number 2 bus number 3 and there will be a reference bus a generator of reactance J0.1 is connected to bus number 1 you can see here the neutral of the generator is solidly grounded therefore this point will be directly connected to the reference bus a transformer of reactance J0.15 is connected between bus bar number 1 and 2. The primary side of the transformer is delta connected. Therefore, this primary side will be directly connected to the reference bus. The secondary side of the transformer is star connected and the neutral is solidly grounded. Therefore, the secondary side of the transformer will be directly connected to bus bar number 2. There is a transmission line of reactance J0.05 connected between bus bar number 2 and 3 and the transmission line can be represented easily in this way. There is a generator of reactance J0.2 connected at bus number 3. The neutral of this generator is directly connected to the ground or you can say the neutral of the generator is solidly grounded therefore this point will be directly connected to the reference bus the examiner is asking the zero sequence driving point reactance of node number three or you can say uh, we have to uh, calculate the thamnes equivalent reactance between bus number three and reference bus I know that you are efficient in solving the problems of network analysis and easily you can tell me the equivalent reactance between bus bar number 3 and reference bus. The Thamnes equivalent reactance can be written in this way. These two reactances will be in series. And this combination will be in parallel with J0.2 so after calculation you will get J0.2 in parallel with J0.2 and the Thamnes equivalent reactance will be J0.1 per unit so the answer of this problem will be the zero sequence driving point reactance of node number 3 will be J0.1 per unit. And in this way we have solved this problem. I am going to solve the next problem. A generator is connected to a transformer which feeds another transformer through a sort feeder. The zero sequence impedance values are expressed in per unit on a common base and are indicated in the figure. We have to calculate the Thabnes equivalent zero sequence impedance at point B in per unit. To explain this problem easily, I am going to assume four buses in this system. You can see here, I have taken, I have introduced four buses in this system bus number 1, bus number 2, bus number 3, and bus number 4. So basically, we have to calculate the Thabnes equivalent zero sequence impedance at bus bar number 4. In order to solve this problem, first 
I am going to make the zero sequence network of the given power system. The zero sequence network can be drawn in this way. You can see here there are four buses in this system bus number one, bus number two, bus number three, and bus number four. There will be a reference bus. At bus bar number 1 there is a generator and the zero sequence reactance of the generator is J0.03. The generator is a star connected and the neutral of the generator is resistance grounded. So make this resistance 3 times and put it in series with the zero sequence reactance of the generator. So make it 3 times it will be point 75. A transformer is connected between bus bar number 1 and 2. The zero sequence reactance of the transformer is J0.1. The primary side of the transformer is delta connected therefore this primary side will be directly connected to the reference bus. The secondary side of the transformer is a star connected and the neutral is solidly grounded therefore this secondary side will be directly connected to bus bar number 2. There is a feeder between bus bar number 2 and 3 and the zero sequence reactance of the feeder is J0.05. Now you can see here there is a transformer between bus bar number 3 and 4. The zero sequence reactance of the transformer is J0.07. The primary side of the transformer is star connected and the neutral is solidly grounded. Therefore, the, this primary side will be directly connected to bus bar number 3. The secondary side of the transformer is star connected and the neutral is resistance grounded. Therefore, Make this resistance three times and put it in series with the zero sequence reactance of the transformer on secondary side. So make it three times and put it here. It will be 0.75. Now we have to calculate the Thevenin's equivalent zero sequence impedance at bus bar number four. So the Thevenin's equivalent impedance the zero sequence Thevenin's equivalent impedance between bus bar number 4 and the reference bus can be calculated easily all these elements are in series so it will be J0.1 plus J0.05 plus J0.07 plus 0.75 and after calculation you will get 0.75 plus J 0.22 per unit. So the Thevenin's equivalent Thevenin's equivalent zero sequence impedance at point B or you can say the Thevenin's equivalent zero sequence impedance at bus bar number 4 will be 0.75 plus J 0.22 per unit and in this way you can say option B will be correct. So in this way we have completed this problem. Let us solve the next problem. In this problem a power system network is given to us. The elements which are present in the power system are generator, transformer T1 and T2, transmission line and a motor. The zero sequence network of the given system is drawn the examiner is asking about the connection of transformer T1 and T2. The options are given to us. We have to select the correct option. To solve this problem, let us recall the switch diagram related to the zero sequence circuit of transformer. Switch number 1 is the series switch of primary side. Switch number 1 dash is the Sunt switch of the primary side. Switch number 2 is the series switch of the secondary side. Switch number 2 dash is the sunt switch 
of the secondary side. Recall all the things related to the switch diagram of the zero sequence circuit of transformer. With the help of this switch diagram, we can talk about the connections of transformer T1 and T2. Now let us solve the problem. Let us talk about the transformer T1. The series switch of the primary side is closed. Therefore you can say the primary side is connected in a star and the neutral is solidly grounded. The series switch of the secondary side of transformer T1 is open. Therefore the secondary side of the transformer T1 will be star connected and the neutral will be ungrounded. Let us talk about transformer T2. The primary switch, the series switch of the primary side is closed. Therefore, the primary side of the transformer T2 will be connected in a star and the neutral will be solidly grounded. The series switch of the secondary side of transformer T2 is open, but the shunt switch of the secondary side of transformer T2 is closed. Therefore, the secondary side of transformer T2 will be delta connected. So you can say that option B is correct. And in this way, we have completed this problem. I'm going to solve the next problem. In this problem, we have to draw the zero sequence circuit of the three phase transformer. Let us say that the transformer is connected between bus bar number one and two. The primary side of the transformer is star connected. The secondary side of the transformer is delta connected. Let us say that the zero sequence reactance of the transformer is X naught. To draw the zero sequence circuit of this transformer, let, let us first define the buses. This is bus bar number one. This is bus bar number two. And this one is the reference bus. The zero sequence reactance of the transformer is X naught. The primary side of the transformer is star connected and the neutral is ungrounded. Therefore, this primary side will neither be connected to bus bar number one and nor this point will be connected to the reference bus. It will remain as it is. The secondary side of the transformer is delta connected. Therefore, this secondary side will be directly connected to the reference bus. So in this way, we have completed this problem. This is the zero sequence circuit of the three phase transformer.